everyone, and welcome back as RNG prepare to face an old rival. Lyric and I are going to take a look at RNG, and Lyric is going to walk us through an RNG and how they play around their star in the top lane, Zhao Hu, and how it makes them such a force of nature in this installment of Neighborhood Tactics presented by State Farm. Now, if you think back to MSI and you weren't necessarily an LPL viewer, we would have told you a million times that RNG liked to play around their top lane in Zhao Hu. Lyric, has that changed? No, not at all. And that's that's one thing, right, is I feel like a lot of people hear us talk about RNG player on top, RNG player on top, but maybe they don't know how much they do it. These first clips we're going to go over are from the LPL when they played against LNG. Just a bit of a brief overview to show everyone, hey, this team does put a lot of stock into the top lane. We see here Xiaohu is playing on the Lucian pick. Again, very volatile champion, does require a lot of resources. Wei already ready with the fact that this wave is crashing, waiting in the brush. Mechanically, I feel like Wei actually is the one who does turn this around and play quite uh -huh. solid. But it just shows, right, how much stock they do put into this top lane of Xiaohu, making sure he was already here. Of course, Xiaohu rolls drops, right? So we remember in the beginning, it was a lot of, okay, he has the Lucian, he can get the AP tops in the top lane, he had his Gnar as well. But uh, as the time has gone on, he has really widened what he can play in that top lane. And I also kind of feel like the, the meta has shifted in that way as well, because there are a lot of carry picks he can pick in that top lane. He's just becoming even more of a strength for RNG. Yeah, and it just feels so perfect, right? Uh, I feel like RNG really were one of the first teams to go with this meta of like so heavily investing the top side. In the second clip, we did see not not only way goes top, the whole team is the one who goes around that. And I love that you bring up, uh, you know, the counter picks and, and the strengths we get in the top lane because we see there, Xiaohu relies on these champions quite a lot and his stats are completely insane because of them. Mm -hmm. We do know that the whole team likes to play around them, I think notably as we saw also in the first uh, in the first clip in terms of Wei and the amount of time he spends hovering around that top lane or even straight up helping out. Let's see how that then uh, turned into that first game that RNG played here at Worlds versus PSG. He pulled out the Syndra. Yeah, and I kind of want to set this up beforehand, right? Because Syndra, not anything new for Xiaohu. He used to be a mid laner, has actually played control mages in the LPL before. Not only the Syndra has also played the Orianna, and specifically against the Kennen, it is a very good counter pick. You outrange him quite heavily, so you always have control of the wave or trades. And second of all, your Scatter of the Week is such a good tool at disengaging any type of all in champion like Kennen. Sadly, we don't have the mini-map. I want everyone to imagine a mini-map because RNG bot lane, they're winning. That means Ming has reset timings. Crying on the Twisted Fate, he can move as well. And we're gonna see here with the fact that Shahu is on the Syndra, a mobile mage can be punished by ganks. So for PSG, they're gonna do the correct thing. They're gonna look for Hanabi to all in while also bringing River up to the top side. I do wanna highlight one mistake we just saw, which is the fact that Hanabi did proc his W before going for the Q. Stun didn't come off, mm -hmm. but really nice read by RNG overall because Xiaohu immediately realizes, hey, I went for my ultimate early. I have more orbs to get the stun. And now my team can turn with the fact that, again, Ming's on that reset. We have crying all the Twisted Fate. And I feel like RNG just executed so well. They keep going in. Syndra doing such a nice job of tethering PSG on their range. Crying now in the fight. And next, RNG realized, hey, doesn't matter if we don't have a wave. We have three against one. We can look for this dive against PSG and they execute. And it's also such a great example of how when you look at RNG drafts, typically you'll see that there are a lot of uh, global champions, or at least for the mid lane, that TF is perfect because you can always go and help up. And indeed, who needs the minions when you're three people, right? And yep. you can push down the tower. So that brings us to our matchup today. We have Zhao Hu versus Adam. Now, for people that aren't as familiar with Adam, uh, Adam said in a clip when they were going through the draw, who Zhao Hu is he good? <laughs> this guy doesn't necessarily watch that much. He is brand new. He is a rookie that joined in summer, and now he's going up against against one of the most experienced players we have in League of Legends. Yeah, and I, I feel like this isn't just LPL bias coming out. I feel like this could be a bit of a rough time coming out for Adam. I mean, he's, he's a young player. He's a new player. shahu has been around for such a long time. And I think we've seen Fnatic don't put all that many resources into helping Adam. He likes to leave lane and help the rest of his team. For RNG, it's going to be a party in the top side. Xiaohu is the new Uzi. Everyone is playing for him on RNG. It's just the opposite uh, in terms of how these teams approach it. But we'll talk more about RNG as they prepare to take on longtime rival Fnatic after this. Again, it won't 
to the State Farm Analyst Desk as two storied and decorated organizations, RNG and Fnatic hold a historic rivalry that will now have a new chapter in just a couple of minutes as they face off once again on the Rift. These two teams have played each other so many times in the past. I think it's what we talked about at the top of the show, the fact that our sport is now a decade long, right? So we have this growing rivalry. It's actually going back to 2013 uh, when it was Starhorn Royal Club from the side of RNG. Yeah, and RNG took that one. I think Evan will remember because that's when Uzi did make it to finals and we had that awesome, you know, T1 uh, Starhorn Royal Club final. But over the years, these guys have met each other continuously throughout like group stages at Worlds. And it does feel like RNG typically have gotten the upper hand, but I do know in the LPL, LPL fans are always afraid for RNG when they have to go up against Fnatic. Yeah, I mean, there are some instances, I think, when we, uh, you know, think about the 2018 Worlds and whatnot in the group stage. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Fnatic pull it out, but it's a bit of a different situation today, it feels like. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, obviously, with upset missing, I think Fnatic is, is set on the back foot pretty heavily. I think he's such a, a key component of their team. You know, they, they have all these players that are so crazy aggressive, and upset to me was always kind of the anchor of the team. He's so consistent. You can always count on him to carry in the late game. So they're going to have to have something special, I think, from the remaining members if you want to overcome a team like, like RNG. Yeah, it's such a mountain to climb, right? Always going up against RNG, but specifically in that situation. If we can look at something that was positive yesterday from the side of Fnatic, uh, Bwipo was a bright spot in the early game, as he is so often for this lineup, also pairing up with Hilly and whatnot, but it just wasn't enough, Lyric. Still, though, I loved what they came out with. They went for the level one invade. We see Bwipo keep up the aggression, invade his topside jungle, and really just wasn't giving Willer much of a break. 
sadly, again, upset's not here, so bot lane was rough, but it feels like a lot of games, Fnatic have always been one of their worst enemies, and it showed yesterday in some of the fights that came through. Yeah, I think that's a good point as well. That's something that has always been uh, true for at least since Whippo and Hillisang have been on this iteration <laughs> of Fnatic. Yeah. But let's theorycraft a little bit into this one. They're up against it. We just talked about the fact, Azale, that um, RNG have a very big topside focus, which does not mean that the rest of the team are slouches. In fact, the, uh, the opposite. And Fnatic have a style where they leave Adam on an island a lot or let him leave the lane so that he can influence the rest of the map. Doesn't seem like that's the best fit stylistically. Yeah, I, I think honestly, if, if they just leave Adam on an island, laning is not his strength. And if he's getting camped, if he have Xiaohu on, on one of those really deadly top lane picks, if he wants to play a mage or if he wants to play his Lucian that you're showcasing him, he's like, what, 20 and 3 or 20 and yeah, 2 all time it's on ridiculous. the Lucian. I, I, I think it's it's really not going to work out. So I think you put Adam on comfort and you put Whip on a strong early game jungler and you try to have them meet 2v2, maybe get Hilly out of lane, get them roaming, try to create some chaos because that's where I think Fnatic has a chance. If they can win out in these early skirmishes that they love to take, they do know how to push an advantage. Um, but barring that, I think it'll be tough for Adam. Yeah, I think I think it'll be rough for Adam, but I love what you just said about early aggression. And especially in my mind as Fnatic, look mid. Everyone knows Krine is not the focal point of RNG at all. I feel like Bwipo and Niski work very well together. So look to exploit that, get some kind of really good mid jungle 2v2, and then start bringing the chaos that Azale was just talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true. I, I think also in the LEC, Niski has really uh, opened a lot of people's eyes as he had a really, really strong summer performance lyric. But you, talking from a coach perspective as well, you just know how difficult it is, right? If your team gets thrown into disarray and you don't have, especially for Fnatic, the usual focal points that you can build on in the bot lane, it just becomes really difficult. Yeah, and it's also always gives you like a different philosoph philosophical approach. Do we try to like band-aid this like new player who didn't have time to come in and like mm -hmm. prop him up with resources? Or do we say, hey, you're going to be a role player. We're just going to look elsewhere to our, our other strengths. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from that, we're looking at RNG, of course, to solidify their spot at the top of the group here as the MSI champions. We'll see what Fnatic can do. They really have to stabilize if they want to have a shot at all in this group. So let's see if our MSI champs can come out swinging or if we have an upset on our hands. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shox. Uh, sadly, no upset in Fnatic. I think with, them, with him, it would have been a very different game plan for them today. But we'll see what Fnatic are able to bring and pull out of the bag against RNG, who should be well underway, the favorites to take this match. Yeah, they should be. But welcome to Worlds, baby. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one, largely because Adam is obviously a player that we talk about a lot. Oh, right? yeah. And they were talking about on the desk about how, like, laning isn't really one of his strong suits. And uh, it, it's kind of an interesting perspective because, you know, he, he didn't really dominate people in terms of, like, yes, but he got a lot of solo kills. Yep. <laughs> like, I think he led the league, actually, in solo kills um, uh, during the summer split. And the guy is aggressive. He, um, This style where he would roam down to mid was not something that he actually did all split long. It was actually something that he would do occasionally. Uh, but whenever he got his hands on something hyper-aggressive, he would actually look to solo kill his opponents. And the most recent example of that is when he played against Wanda in the best of five, and he solo killed him twice on Darius. So the, the guy is a player that I think knows his limits in the straight-up 1v1. And I don't think that he's such a weak player that you can just pick a matchup into him and expect to just uh, absolutely dominate him. But of course, when we think about top lane talent in Europe, it's not been our strongest, yeah. this split. And now he's going up against Jiaohu, who has been considered one of the best top laners in the world. Yeah, originally uh, one of the best mid laners in the world, now one of the best top laners in the world. And he has a team that really enables him as a player as well. You saw that, ju that jungle proximity is ridiculous. Like the fact that it's 14.5%, that is so much time relative to so many other top laners. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what the game plan and the approach is. As we're now in a draft. Aurelia, Jace, Ophelia was going to come out from the side of Fnatic. RNG looking to remove the Misfortune away from Bean. So it looks like they're actually trying to remove some of his potential comfort. They're also going to remove the uh, Jarvan and the Lucian. So I was going to say Lucian, I think, will be the first pick here. But I also wonder if Bean is down to be able to play things like the Zig spot lane, if they want to play still weak side. Ezreal is another option for them. Uh, but it looks like that with Lee Sin up and available, which is a common red side band that we do see, Whippo is going to get his hands on that. Yeah, I was wondering whether it would be the Lee Sin or perhaps the Graves there, because of course can be flexed. Whippo had a good early game performance on it yesterday. Just coming back to that Adam point, I think the, the motto that best exemplifies Adam in my mind is, it's a good death which is he will often dive a tower, know he's going to die as long as he kills his opponent and gets 
and you know some extra CS or denies his opponent's CS out of it, he is very happy to do that. Cryin here is going to be put across onto this Twisted Fate, although after Xiaohu played Syndra yesterday in the top lane, who knows, maybe TF is going top, wouldn't get the most utilization out of his ultimate, but you never know with this RNG team. I played against an AD Twisted Fate jungle the other day in solo queue, so there's always that potential too. I didn't realize Unicorns of Love were scrimming again. <laughs> uh, ooh, okay, so the Viego. Now the assumption is for now that this is going to be in the jungle, but remember the champ can always be flexed. We were literally just talking about the champion last game, where it seems that this champ has very much fallen out of favor in the current world's meta. Uh, but we're going to see it returned. It was one of Wei's most played champions, uh, and we'll see how it performs, because I think that into the Lee Sin matchup early on, Lee can do a lot of damage, but as it progresses, uh, I can definitely see where um, the Viego can actually come out on top in the head-to-head. -head. Meanwhile, Fnatic, they're going to match the Twisted Fate with the Silas. This is one of Niski's go-to champions. Rise, Silas, and uh, TF were his three most played during the playoffs. And it's a very common answer being used into the Twisted Fate as well. I see as well, Fnatic deciding to put utility on their AD carry. No real surprises there. The Ash, very strong, attracting the enemy jungler early on with the Hawk shot, something that is often overlooked in solo queue. And then obviously alongside that, the slows and the enchanted crystal arrow can work out very well for you in a fight. However, Low mobility on her means that Xiaohu's going to pick his cannon up here and has the option always to get on towards that back line. So I'm going to say it now. If Olaf isn't banned, Olaf top could be a thing. 100%. Because I'm just looking at the amount of CC that RNG have. Right, yes, obviously the cannon has massive AoE CC, but single target TF, single target Viego, and also against the cannon, I could see a world where Adam would bring out his signature Olaf, but I'm going to wait to see it a little bit more because right now I think Fnatic is... Well, they do have some engage with the Ash Arrow, but I consider that a little bit more of a pick style tool rather than a reliable engage. I'm thinking of Leona right now for someone like Fnatic. Meanwhile, RNG still have a lot of flexibility and options with their bot lane, and if they wanted to, they could just take the Leona for themselves right now. Save your AD carry counter pick for last. Kennen, a champion that had a lot of priority in the LPL was played in almost every single game of their playoffs, played or banned, whereas in the LEC we didn't see him that often. Support going to be saved for last here with Kaiser getting locked in for Gala. A player synonymous with the champion. We yep. all remember the Pentagala casting moment. Gala, 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 Gala. Was, uh, he was able to get a pentakill in his first ever finals, and here he matches into a player who has never played in his regional finals in Bean. And there is the Olaf. Great prediction there, Vedius. Understanding Adam very well, of course. Alongside that, Hillisang's Pike is actually locked in. I just yes, took a second is. there to make sure it was. <laughs> I'm really surprised. So the main reason why I think they didn't go Leona was number one, they don't want to have to face Gala going double cleanse uh, because you get a lot of value doing Ash, Leona, and then playing cleanse into it. Sure. Uh, but the other thing is, I think that they expected Ming to want to go for a hard engage, something like the Leona that the Silas could then steal. And so by going for the Rel, I think that it offers RNG more engaged tools while giving Silas a slightly weaker ultimates to be actually steal away. Not to say that Silas can't get any value out of it, but Leona that scales with AP, that's always a scary thing to have to deal with aside of being, you know, just being sucked in by a magnet, I guess. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I like the pick from RNG. I think it gives uh, Ming a lot of options to be able to set up dives as well. And it also synergizes very nicely with the Kaiser because you have to remember that you have that really cool combo where she can dive onto the back line. Then you can also offer the stun yep. from the Rel as well. Uh, a tried and true combo that we actually saw a lot when Rel was very, very prevalent in the meta. So it seems that RNG, they have still options with where they want to go. You Because they have Kryon on this Twisted Fate, he can easily play towards either side of the map. I expect it to be a very topside focused game with Kaiser are very much being left isolated in the bot side of the map. And then it's going to come into question as how does Adam do on his Olaf? This is a comfort pick for him. This is something that domestically, when he was playing in the LFL, he made a name for himself on. It was this and Darius that were his two signature champions um, that kind of stood outside of the meta. And it is very lane dominant. It is a very scary thing to go up against. But if it starts falling behind, it can be something that RNG can very easily look to exploit. And it's very easy to kill if you fall behind on it, uh, especially if you don't have the Ragnarok up, that Twisted Fate just destinying up to your lane. Team that up with a Slicing Maelstrom stun, and that Olaf is as good as done. However, 
top lane is where our eyes have to be in the early game. Adam in his first ever international competition, playing against the only man ever to win an international competition in two different roles. It is truly a David versus Goliath on the top side of the map. And Fnatic trying to even out the numbers a little bit here. 5v1, <laughs> we'll see if we can take him down. All right, let's see what Fnatic tech they've come up with. So level ones, for those that don't know, Fnatic is quite famous for coming up with crazy level one tech. Right now, Hillisang, look at Hillisang and Bean. Look at the position they're in. They're trying to leverage the Fog of War. Well, it's all Fog of War, so here we are. Axe comes through. Xiaohu showing respect, not going to get caught out of position. I don't think they even spotted him. And now they should see him. So Fnatic know that Xiaohu know, and Xiaohu knows what Fnatic is up to. Meanwhile, pings are coming down on the bot side, red buff. So what I expect to happen now is the Lee Sin. Oh no, the thing is, you're Lee Sin. Ah, it's awkward. So normally what junglers will often do is they'll go back to base, they'll trade their trinket out for the sweeper, and then they'll immediately use it to sweep out their, their half of the map. But that's not what they're considering right now. Bwipo and Niski are clearly looking for a delayed invade. Look where Ming is. What is, yeah, I was just about to say, what is Ming up to here? RNG read what is going on. They expect some sort of sneaky shenanigans, and here this ward is so big. RNG read the level one. Oh, such intelligent play by RNG. They're just going to wait it, wait it, wait it out. Oracle's popped, and Fnatic do not know. They are unaware. Pepe laughed. Whipper by himself, left alone by Adam and Niski. Here we go, crying. Flash stun card. Whipper knocked up immediately. Whipper gets the smite, tries to flash away. Ignite is ticking. Zhao who flashes forward. Whipper survives. The red buff secured though. By the way, he's going to look for the spectral more stun. Adam has to flash away. And in the end, even though they didn't get a kill, RNG absolutely dominate that early trade. Such great awareness from RNG. This is going to put Wei so far ahead. And it's going to put Whippo's jungle clear so far behind. Look at what Wei's doing. Immediately moves into the top side of the map, knowing that Adam doesn't have flash. And this is going to give him the opportunity to split the map as well. This is going to make the 1v1 top side so much harder for Adam and Bwipo. Oh no, don't tell me he's pathing towards the top side of his map. Oh, this is going to be devastation for Bwipo. He's going to lose his blue buff. He's going to fall even further behind. And what he was doing to Willa is now happening to him. Yeah, Willa backstage is rubbing his hands together gleefully right here. Hang Ray, on. though, does have flash. Going to get the Spectral more stun here onto Adam. No flashes on Bwipo or Adam. There's a the flash away from Wei. Niski down towards the bottom side. Just getting wailed away on by crying. The flash forward as they look to Xiaohu. No flash on the cannon either. Wei's trying to get away. Bwipo needs the auto attack. Stun's going to land on Niski. That's first blood. Wei escapes Adam and Bwipo now level one. Running back to the safety of their tower. Crying locks in the gold card. But RNG will satisfy themselves with a kill. With all of Bwipo's jungle. And with Fnatic basically not having a jungler for the next at least 10 minutes of the game. So Fnatic saw Zhao who isolated and they had an option to just commit onto him and get that kill because Wei was out of the fight. But Bwipo was like, if I get this double buff, it is massive for me. So he over commits and he separates from the rest of his team, creating a two versus two with which RNG are able to turn around in their favor. Beautiful stuff from RNG. They continue to accelerate this early game lead. Charlo? Oh, they're now in some trouble, though. He will use by Gala. Hillisang still has the Ignite here. Wave pushing in underneath the tower. Someone is burnt for the RNG bottom lane as the wave does push in. Gala, of course, falling behind in CS early on. Hillisang <laughs> continues to be a nuisance, but Gala didn't have a support for the first couple of waves of the game, so it's no surprise that he is about 7 to 10 CS down. Whipper trying to steal this way. Actually, already level 3. Catch-up XP is a hell of a drug there for the Lee Sin. As he's uh, been able to get himself some gold. And now Adam leaving lane once again from the top lane. Joins up with Whippo. Steals away a little bit of the camp and uh, helps get his jungler back in the game. This means that Whippo will actually be able to secure both Scuttle Crabs because Hillisang and Bean do have the prio in that lane. So not actually that bad overall for Whippo. If they can secure this blue buff as well. Ooh, but Hillisang has his eyes on Gala. It's an absolute psychopath, is Hillisang. <laughs> like, he's just <laughs> diving down with bone skewers. Bwipo now can take away this blue. And it's the second time in two days we've seen a Lee Sin basically have nothing in the early game to getting back into the game pretty quickly. And Okay, I'm, but to be fair, Willow was put much further behind <laughs> yesterday. I'm trying to equate the two so that Fnatic feel motivated and come back oh, like, yeah. like oh, well, well, I, I mean, right now, no? they're not in like a massive deficit. There's only one kill, the difference right now. Ooh, nice sidestep there from Ming. Hillisang has landed a lot of hooks. The thing that we didn't talk about, uh, which you, you did briefly mention, was because Ming was up with the team during that whole play, 
so much was lost for Gala. You can see that a massive CS discrepancy has been built up because he was 1v2 in that lane and didn't have any assistance. Um, and now, because of the play that Buipo has shifted towards the bot side of the map, Adam is forced to go back to base. He recognizes that he's in a very awkward position right now. He is down in experience, down in farm. It's a massive wave he lost out though as well. So, yep, going to be about half the farm of Xiaohu right now. As you say, we'll be able to catch this underneath the tower in the end. I like the strat of backing, TPing back, knowing that the wave's there, getting a little bit more defensive itemization underneath your belt with that Ruby Crystal. Adam is able to catch this wave. 500 gold between the two teams, or they have a bounce. And across the board, slight leads on the bottom side of the map for Fnatic, whereas on the top side of the map, RNG, very much in the advantage. So, the thing to take into consideration now over the next few minutes is this wave is stacking for Adam towards Jauhu. Um, Buipo, though, well, his camps are actually passed up towards the top side of the map. The thing that I'm curious about is to who's going to hit level 6 first between the two mid laners. There's a world where Fnatic can look to leverage a stacked wave up towards the top side of the map, try to threaten Jauhu and actually kind of use... Um, the level lead that Xiaohu has against him, because you can see Adam just hitting level 5, Niski's going to have the push in mid, there's a window where he can roam, but Buipo instead choosing to path towards bot. Looks like that his eyes are actually on the Drake, trying to leverage the bot push, or he's maybe even threatening a bot dive. There are zero TPs available right now, and I think the bot dive is the play. He's going to try and get out of here, gets caught in the middle of his jump, has to flash. Oh, but Adam is moment. now in trouble. Adam not yet, level 6 doesn't have the Ragnarok, turned up with the slicing match from way on his way as well, Adam. Trying to get out of this, the Undertow. He's going to go back and pick it up. Now takes the flash away. Spectral more. Stun way goes wide. Adam still running for the hills here. Destiny's coming in. A counter Destiny as well. And now Niski's in for a world of hurt. Underneath the tower, Xiaohu goes. And Niski, Destiny is straight to his demise. But such a massive misplay here from Fnatic. Like, everything that we were just talking about, the stacking wave for Adam up towards the top side of the map, the fact that he was going to be forced to overextend in that position, you have to be aware of what RNG can do, because they're going to do it. Yep. This is RNG that we're talking about. The level 6 comes through for Cry, and what does he do? Immediately looks towards the top side of the map, and while he was not necessary, Xiaohu took advantage of the fact that he was level 6, and he ends up punishing Adam in the 1 versus 1. He's now going to secure himself more plates. Now, let's see if Fnatic can get something back on the cross map. Ming actually going for the engage here, still going to get stunned up. And Glow Ignite is taking Gala, dives forward, and Ming takes the kill. Whippo here a little bit too late. Dragon's Rage kick available, but he misses the Sonic Wave. Now the TP's come in, and Fnatic are trying to make plays on the map. Whippo will be able to take out one, but Zhao who comes in, in trying to crystal arrow from Bean. There's the kick. Gala down. Bean survives. Zhao who down as well. And Bean, the substitute, gets three kills in the early game. What was that? So initially, that play looked like a travesty for Fnatic. The fact that Hillisang lost his life so early in the straight up two versus two, but now look, this is so good for Fnatic because Jauhu, he's going to lose this wave. He committed his TP top. Adam can get so much back. Uh, as I said, he can get back. No, he's not. He's going to roam mid because that's <laughs> what Adam does. Um, but it was such a great play from Whippo because he held on to the kick in in uh, in the exchange that he can actually knock up Jauhu while also setting up Gala to be killed by Bean. So everything ended up working out nicely, and now Fnatic have equalized the gold. Bean is sitting at 2-0 and 1. Garner is extremely far behind, and even though Xiaohu uh, had a huge advantage top lane, and he's still level 7, of course, uh, and let's have a look back at this. You can see here the level advantage for Xiaohu. If you look at the minimap, you can see that the Silas is primed and ready to TP up towards the top lane, but Kryon is in exactly the same position. And if Adam had something like a Gore Drinker here, yeah, maybe he could turn this one around, but... This is just a huge overcommitment from Niski. He should have recognized that his top laner was dead, and he ended up giving over a kill that he just didn't need to give over. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, uh, Ming has just backed, meaning that the moment they come back in, they're primed and ready to fight. Everything gets burned on the Hillisang, and he can't disengage. And you think, okay, at this point, Bean is dead, especially when Whippo misses his Q. But uh, he ends up getting that initial kill. Bean flashes away. We don't have time because we've got more fight. Hillisang has six here. Death and Below is going to land it. Crying going in with the Destiny as well. Death and Below from Hillisang just to try and get away from this Spectral more Flash. Bean stunned up. Wade takes out Hillisang and now underneath the tower. That's the shutdown. RNG answer back in the bottom lane. However, Niski's on his way. Whippo there as well. 
Dragon's Rage Kick about to come off cooldown. There's the stun card, but once again missing the Sonic Waves. Call of the Q not quite hitting yet. Garland dives away with the Killer Instinct and will survive. Really nice play once again from RNG. They do not slow down. Even though they are typically a topside focused team, the moment Kryon's ultimate is up, they look for a play. While Ming does end up falling, it doesn't matter because they end up getting two in return. Getting that shut down onto Bean as well, kind of hurting his momentum is a really big deal for RNG. And they make sure that they keep the game going their way. Kryon on this twisted fate. One one of his best champions, something that he is extremely comfortable on, showcasing what he's capable of and how much impact he can have over the map. It's everywhere on the map so far, alongside Wei, that deadly duo for RNG. Hillasang here and Charlie Crystal out, crying. Not 100% sold. He had to flash from that one. Bone Skewer goes wide anyway, so doesn't have to uh, really pay for the fact that he flashed a little bit too early there. I think the arrow was going wide. Still respects it ever. The thing about the Ash hitbox is it is, you know, slightly bigger than the arrow. The majority of hitboxes, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so he does showcase that respect. Something we also have to know, Adam, how Jiao, who's like, where's Adam? And Adam's like, I'm right here. Adam has a Kindle gem and a Ragnarok to try and take this trade. Jiao, who runs away, doesn't actually really expend too much there. Just the uh, lightning rush and Gwepo able to take the Rift Herald here. So that's a dragon and a Rift Herald taken by Gwepo Niski here on the bottom side. Teaming up with Hillasang now to defend this bot lane tier one. So they've moved Bean into mid, and they basically said, hey, listen, if all Kryon wants to do is farm and leave, you sit here and farm, we'll keep Niski bot lane, uh, and he'll just stay relatively safe as Hillasang looking for any opportunity to find a pick. Way, once again, up towards the top side of the map. This man is always practiced. No, the Whippo's here. Xiaohu doesn't have flash, doesn't have a way to get across here. Sonic Wave once again going wide, but Whippo's on his way. There's the Destiny, Whippo underneath the tower, stun carded up. Spectral Maul just short once again. TP's coming in as Niski tries to join this. And once again, it feels like Fnatic are throwing good after bad here. With the TP coming in from Niski, not really much he could do. Exactly that. It's one of those questions where like, okay, even if Wade didn't know that Lee Sin was there, the reality was that they had the Twisted Fate ult primed and ready to go. And this is the great thing about Kryon. He's always right behind his team whenever there is action about to happen. And this is how he utilizes the Twisted Fate so well. Now this is a two versus three. Magnus Storm coming out of this TP as well. A stopwatch from Kryon keeps him alive. And Charlie Crystal is going to hit onto Xiaohu in the TP. Immediately, Adam just runs in the wrong direction. This is something that has plagued Fnatic over and over in the LEC. Their willingness to take a fight bites them more often than not. They are just... they. They keep overforcing these plays. Silas is nowhere near strong enough to try and fight anyone right now. He really needs that Everfrost completed at least. And with Adam so far behind in the 1v1, there's very little. They, they shouldn't be trying to force this, but they are. And like, yes, if Hillasan can get a couple kills, then you can start sharing that gold around and there are ways in which you can get back in. But I felt like Fnatic was in a fine spot. Yeah, it was like 600 gold. The, the gold is relatively even and instead they kept forcing and RNG's like, okay, we'll happily take this. They're playing the map so much better. They're utilizing this Twisted Fate extremely well uh, and they're benefiting off the bat. Uh, ben Travis there with the Adam on Olaf, Hilly on Pike, get the 500 cc's of Hopium stat. That's a, a very low dose of Hopium, <laughs> to be honest. But I mean, look at this. So he immediately gets stunned. Really nice side step from Cry, and the engage comes through, and the TP comes through from the Olaf, but Hellasang's already dead. So squishy this early on into the game. And I mean, he's going to keep being squishy. He just gets more damage later on. Adam then TP's in, but it's just too little too late. And it feels like the frustration is really starting to mount for this Fnatic roster. They're, they're trying to force plays, and here comes another one. Looking to cry underneath the tower, Bone Skewer's gonna land, crying no flash, no way out. Shut down, goes over to Niski. So, this time round, Fnatic are able to make a play successful. They're able to shut down Cryon and get a little bit of gold into their back pocket. But look at the side lanes. Garla is pushing down bot and will get himself plates. Xiaohu is doing exactly the same top and he will get himself more plates. And you have to sit there and ask, was this really worth it? Okay, you will be able to take down the mid tier one, but you're sharing this gold amongst multiple members of your team. Meanwhile, Wei and Gala are going to secure the tower bot lane. Xiaohu secured himself three plates top. RNG overall should be pretty happy with the gold that they gained. Ripto's going to charge in. So that's two towers in the mid lane. But as you say, RNG is still very much in the lead in terms of gold. 1,300 their advantage. Hidosank looking for Xiaohu on the top side of the map. The Krux, one of them will be taken out, but Whippo will very happily accept this as it comes back. They're looking for this dive, but Brian has Destiny. Way is on his way up. The wave is not going to be oh, here in time. I mean, it's a, it's a 5v3, even with the Destiny coming in. Whippo, attract Repel, able to dodge away. There's the stun card, way down towards the bottom side. Hook is going to land onto Xiaohu. 
And for once, <laughs> the Natic show a degree of self-control. Yes, they certainly do. Um, they decide not to dive, which I think was the smart choice. RNG were like, go on. <laughs> Be my guest. We're all here. We're ready and we're waiting. Uh, RNG will not pick themselves up kills. All they ended up expending was the Twisted Fate Ultimate, which may give Fnatic a small window. But the big benefactor of all that was Gala. Yep. Remember that he was half the CS of Veen. He was very far behind in lane and he was struggling, but because he's been given so much freedom and the tower, he's now completed his first item. He's ahead of Farm versus Veen. And. Uh, Hang on. Everfrost coming out. Mink caught in it. Wasn't intended for him. Here's Hillisang as well. There's the bone skewer. The Quirin has to flash away. Magnus Storm pop now. And after a moment of self-control, Fnatic lose all of it once again. Gala takes the kill on Zaniski. Xiaohu chasing Hillisang down off towards the top side. Misses with the initial shuriken, so Hillisang should be able to go away, but Xiaohu not having any of that. Flashes in for the kill. And, and it's another situation where RNG is just poised and ready. You know, there's two members sitting in mid lane. They're they have the teleport available on Xiao, who immediately comes through the second that Niski and Hillisang overstep. And you just have to wonder what the comms are here in Fnatic. They they keep overforcing these plays. They keep trying to find fights that they are just not able to come out on top of. The experience is starting to mount. Really, the only person that's far ahead is Bwipo. He's been dominating in terms of the jungle farm. but And he has two, well, one level now over Wei, but... I don't know if that's going to be the difference maker when your mid lane is sitting at one and four and your top laner doesn't even have an item yet. I think the big thing if you are looking at this as Fnatic is you have to say, let's just put our foot on the brakes. Let's just stop with these players. I don't think plays. that'll ever happen. I won't, <laughs> but if you actually look at it from an objective point of view, right? We're 16 minutes in. Yes, the kills are very different, right? There's a big difference there, six different kills. But Fnatic are within a thousand gold of RNG. Yeah, they are. Like, you don't have to keep forcing these Hail Mary plays to be able to get back on into the game. You can see the difference, as you say, actually even in the jungle, down towards the it's bottom top, side, Veen really. has a slight lead. Top lane, very advantageous for Xiaohu, but yep. you can ward for him. You can try and keep that cannon out of the fights. <laughs> I can hear the hope here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the important thing is to consider how these fights play out. So RNG's comp is very dive heavy, right? Um, they are obviously a very good team fighting team, large, by and large, because of how talented Gala is. Sure. And when you think about how their composition works, they have a lot of single target damage um, outside of the cannon ultimate. Yeah, the right? slicing motion for yeah, the game. But you, ooh, Ash Arrow going to go wide. Um, that could be bad for Jarrah. Yeah, okay, Whipple going to come in and save him there. But Wei is going to do a lot of single target damage, look to try and get resets. Oh my god, Hillisang plays on the I edge. I mean, it's just, it's just tank stuff. He gets the kill of Instinct, I guess. Gala's flash in. There's the Destiny. And the chase is on once again. Crying, looking for it, but couldn't quite find the gold card. Tower falls in the top side, and RNG just continually accepting every kill that Fnatic decides to give them. And Niski's looking to give them a little bit more, it seems. Flash in, flash away from Ming. They didn't want to bring Xiaohu and Wei across. Of course, no TP, but Xiaohu now alongside way with the Rift Herald, can just charge down this tier two. Exactly. Fnatic, they claimed so much control over the top side of the map. They get themselves a tower, they get themselves good vision, and then what happens? They try to force a play in mid lane. Gala ends up getting the kill. Kryon is immediately behind him with the Twisted Fate Ultimate again, showcasing his proficiency on the champion, and then RNG immediately punished by pushing through the top side of the map. And it feels like that every time Fnatic tried to make the play happen, not only does RNG stop it or turn it in their favor, they then get even more some somewhere else on the map. RNG constantly showing us why a lot of people look at them as strong favorites for the tournament. Whippo going for the kickback. Crying here, we're locking the gold card. Niski on his way as well, and Crying doesn't really have a way to get away from this one. No flash for him, it means that he will fall. Fnatic able to find a pick on the side lane. But yeah, RNG very much one of the favorites for this tournament. And even though they came in as the third seed from the LPL, a lot of people look at them as very strong. Killer Instinct sold on the way, but Niski will not look to go any further there onto Gala. Gala didn't have a huge amount of vision, but even that still wasn't enough. He just sidestepped everything. This man is always a pleasure to watch. 164 CS, uh, highest in the game right now, with a fully completed item working towards the second. Interestingly, Adam has actually been able to catch up in the CS department uh, and is actually even in levels. So I'm not really sure how he did that, but, <laughs> but he did.
I'll, I'll be honest, there's been so many like individual. Oh, these two people are fighting now. These two people are fighting now. I don't blame you for not tracking well, the exact jung uh, top lane paths. The gold is clearly very different in yeah. the top lane. Now, the jungle has gone even more in the favor of Wei. He's been able to catch up in terms of experience. He's got a 500 gold lead, the mid lead as well, bot eight lead. It's just RNG have leads across the board. And while the lead is not so insurmountable that I would call this game done and dusted just yet, the way in which RNG is approaching this game is it's just a matter of they are approaching the fight smarter, they're utilizing the Twisted Fate ultimate extremely well, they're not overforcing skirmishes, and they're able to punish everyone on the map. Now, Wei is in a two versus one, but look, Ming and Gala gets collapsed first. So in the event that a fight started, they would have been in a better situation. And having a look at Pike, who's now sitting down towards the bot side of the map as well. And it's this Drake that we're really keeping our eyes on. One to one in Drake's for now, but that's likely where we're gonna see the next big objective. Hillisang constantly looking for these hooks. Xiao, who will go in with the rocket belt. Hillisang will be able to dodge across the wall. But right now, RNG are the ones pushing forward. Xiao, who has the attractive hell on him. And Niski is backing uh... in a bush. He was in the shop. And the stopwatch will only stop time for a second. Niski dies. Xiao, who now on a killing spree. And uh, Whippo doing basically the exact same thing his mid laner did, except without the death. There, as uh, RNG gained control of the bottom side river. And uh, with 20 seconds on the Cloud Drake, they should be able to secure that pretty soon. A lot of mistakes from Niski this game. We've seen him overcommit, overforce, and now losing to the Shotkeeper, literally, as another fight kicks off. There's a Magnus Sword from Ming onto the back line. Hillisang trying to get away, and Charlie Crystalau goes through the uprights, and there comes the Slicing Master. Great kick back by Whippo, but the Rocket Belt is back up. Hillisang tries to get away. Will just about escape Destiny from crying on towards the back. Bean's going to open up, try and get the damage down with the Ash, but already RNG get another couple of kills, and they work their way straight across towards the Baron. And Fnatic, they don't have their mid laner, and they pick a fight 5v4. RNG are just... They don't have to do anything. Fnatic is doing it for them. Oh, they're them. going for it again. Here we go. TP coming in from Cry and as RNG. 4,000 HP on the Baron. Bean stepping forward. Adam there as well. There's no smite here for Fnatic, but they still want the fight. Way secures it. Adam down already. Niski down as well. And I can do nothing but laugh because it's so Fnatic to see. 18 kills to 6. Now RNG. Baron buff. Game well and truly in control. And after a few early missteps, RNG have totally taken this game out of Fnatic's hands. They certainly have. RNG have just responded so much better. Fnatic, they are not slowing down. Maybe they should. As Whippo looks for the fight. Here comes Xiaohu. And immediately he's turned back around on RNG. Hillisang trying to put the damage down as he can. Can't quite get the stun, but there's the death from below. And maybe they shouldn't. Way now in a 2v1 as Whippo continues to trade in. Ming on his way. Attract Rappel will land the stun. Doesn't want to use it yet. Dragon's Rage kick will knock Wei back. Hillisang still looking for it. Death and Below isn't enough damage. The counter, the heartbreaker from Wei goes wide. And the fight continues as Hillisang in the end falls to Ming. They're going to chase Whippo as well because Wei has stolen away. The Phantom under tow. But Nitsky dives back in. The slicing mouse to turn it back around. Garlo already unstoppable. And Wei still survives. Nitsky down. Wei in the end will fall. Adam trying to chase onto Garlo. He'll get the shot down there. Ming with the crash down. Being low. Adam now in a 2v1. The exhaust will tick away on him, but he will still be able to get a triple kill. Hang on. He's healing up the Undertow crying. Do you have a gold card to lock in? Find one in your stack deck. He'll pull it out, and Adam will run away. Who has Baron now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just crying? Yep. Wait, I think that was actually really worth for Fnatic. Yeah, just... They got a bunch of shutdowns, <laughs> and and like RNG just lost four Barons. Look, their, their Rebel Baron power play is only 800 gold. Adam just made so much money <laughs> off that fight. And if he had a summon, he probably could... Oh, Hillis hangs back. Medic, hope your voice is ready. All right, here we go. TP coming in. Bone Skewer goes wide. Everfrost's going to hit Adam. Doesn't have the flash. Looking for the Undertow. Connects with the edge of it. And Hillis can... Oh, he messes it up. He messes up the dive across the wall. But Crying still caught out. And Crying will fall. No Baron left. That's it. All the Barons are gone. I'm sorry I ever doubted you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> let us recap, shall we, Medic? Um, RNG find themselves with a five and a half thousand gold lead. Clearly, still oh four and a half thousand gold lead. My apologies, my math is a little wonky Thanks after so this much. game. <laughs> um, RNG have twice the number of kills and are clearly in a great position. Um, however. Hillisang Adam just doesn't got a know that. Hillisang. <laughs> Hillisang believes that money is more of a 
construct. Yeah. You know? <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen the copy pasta? When Fnatic are 10,000 gold ahead, Hillasang goes, goes in, in a strong yeah. position and goes in. When Fnatic are even on gold, Hillasang <laughs> thinks they're in <laughs> slight <laughs> holes, so he goes for the fight. When Fnatic are 10,000 gold behind, Hillasang knows he needs to make like a, a play, play, so he goes in. That's kind of been the story of this game as he looked to try and get a flank and now we'll join up with the rest of his team. But as you say, let's recap Vedius. Well, it's the items that really need yeah. to be recapped because even though Fnatic, yes, they, they removed the Baron from RNG and yes, the Dragon Soul is not really a massive point of contention. The truth is that RNG is just so Ammo. far ahead in itemization. Ming going in with the Mega Storm, Wei is here, Crying's coming in with the Destiny as well, but Ming's already dead, Death from Below is going to find that mark. They're looking to try and chase into Gala, the Slicing Mouse from one to the back line is able to get enough. Whip will kill off Gala, pop the stopwatch, two of you, as now it's a 3v3. Niski will fall, Adam and Whip are the only two left alive for Fnatic. The chase continues. Crying, no flash, but we're able to safeguard across the wall. Adam, no Ragnarok, and Zhao Hu can chase him down, but with the Undertow, there's the slow way. We'll get the movement speed from the harrowed path. Adam cannot get away from the Spectral more, and that is enough. Adam tries to kill off Zhao Hu, but doesn't have the damage to do it. And this is exactly it. Yes, Fnatic, earlier on, were able to get a good number of kills, and they were able to remove the Baron from RNG, but the reality is that the item differential is still very real. And while Fnatic is able to take down the bot lane of RNG, the top side stands strong. Wrong. Wei is 8, 1, and 9. Zhao Hu has three fully completed items on this cannon, and they're able to just dismantle the backline of Fnatic. Very well played team fight from RNG, and they continue to hold on to the gold lead. Yeah, but Hillasai. <laughs> Not going to be able to land the Bone Skewers, the Rocket Belt procced there by Zhao Hu and RNG. Now, they will just take down a couple more towers. Three minutes on the next dragon. If they want to look for it, it would be a third of the game for them. Second Cloud, Fnatic pushing out the bottom lane. There is a TP ward behind them. Way here. Oh, he's on the right side here of Whippo, who is looking for something, but now he's on the wrong side of dodge. Bone Skewer's gonna land. Whippo gonna dive. Well, waiting arm straight into Gala, who will take the kill. Crying, looking for a little bit more out of this one. There's the kill of instinct from Gala, and immediately he dives onto the back line, and Bean is down. It's a triple for Gala, as he wipes away the bottom side of Fnatic's map. And RNG once again punish Fnatic. They wanted to try and find a pick onto Xiaohu, catch him unawares, but RNG had already made their way back out onto the map, and we're primed and ready to make plays happen. 9, 3, and 10 is the scoreline now for Gala, and RNG are making their way into the base of Fnatic. And it feels like now RNG really are slapping Fnatic with their wallets. Fnatic continue to look for a play, but their inhibitor in the bottom lane is down, and RNG can just take whatever they want from the map. 30 seconds on the Baron, expectations are they will start to set up around that. Of course, Hillasang with the resets, Niski with the stolen ultimate could do something, but very much last chance saloon here for Fnatic. Certainly is. With the base now broken and with Baron spawning so soon. It's just a matter of time, it feels like. Oh, Hillisang, he's like, oh, it's the enemy? Uh, that means a play. Bone skew up. It's not going to reach. You're correct. Because he didn't cast it. Correct. Okay. Let's take this brief moment of reprieve to recognize RNG continue to look like heavy favorites in this group. Every single thing that Fnatic has thrown at them, RNG has immediately shut down. They've punished every single mistake. They have been performing exceptionally well individually. Cryon is showcasing why you really shouldn't give him Twisted Fate. He has been involved in 20 of their 29 kills. Um, and what's even crazier is Gar has been involved in 19 of them. <laughs> um, and yes, they have looked dominant. Right now, with the bot and hip exposed, Double TP is still up and available for Fnatic. Oh, Adam, he has been spotted by Zhao Hu. Adam. Able to dodge away from the first Shuriken, but Ragnarok will have to be popped here from Adam because he's stunned up. Able to walk away, actually, for the moment. Whippo hits a Sonic Wave as Crying decides with the rest of RNG that they don't want to take that fight. They're looking for Gala in the mid lane, but Gala can just back away. Niski hasn't stolen away the Destiny or anything, so it doesn't have that flank potential. And at some point soon, Fnatic are going to have to answer that bottom lane wave. Adam there now, double supers pushing in. RNG will reset and then can look to push out towards that Baron once again. And as you say, RNG very much the favorites in this group. I think PSG, after a good win against Hanwha, will be looking for that second spot. And I, as much as it sounds a little bit like an EU fanboy, I do want to give Fnatic credit because they've come out with fighting spirits in this game and have constantly tried to make plays against RNG, even though they, they probably have shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, even though they have been in the hole sometimes, but when your AD carry subs out, it's a pretty difficult thing to work around. Baron now secured for RNG. Good take by them to reset into the Baron when they knew Adam had to deal with the super minions was uh, 
perfect bit of macro there by the LPL representatives. Yep, very clean overall and uh, very little opportunity for Fnatic to even get in for a potential steal. Now with the Baron empowered minions and a wave pushing down mid, they're looking to do more damage to the base of Fnatic. Yeah, Gala's at four items now. Infinity Edge, Kraken, Collector, Runans, very powerful, very quickly going to melt through any of these towers. Whippo trying to answer that bot lane wave, but the super minion is pushing in. Bone skewer after bone skewer, not connecting here from Hillisang. As Fnatic will walk into darkness as Wayne Crying are in a very strong position if they want to take this fight. Ming could dive in as well, but Hillisang knows he can be a little bit more risky as to how far he pushes up. Super minions in the bottom lane now about to pass where the inhibitor usually would be. Hillisang lands another hook, but Ming really doesn't mind too much. Kryon has the destiny to join his team if a fight erupts in the middle lane. The inhibitor not taking too uh, inhibitor tower not taking too much damage as Kaiser, not the longest range AD carry in the world, will struggle to walk up there in the face of Hillisang. The wave still about five seconds away, so Fnatic actually had time to clear that bot wave and then catch this mid wave. Question is, will Gala push forward? And it was only going to land onto Xiaohu. There's the Everfrost as well. Ming chunked out a little bit. Apple Fire Cannon from Kryon brings some damage down onto the tower. And here goes Xiaohu with a slicing match from into Magna Storm. And Fnatic, a valiant defender. Their base was ended in a heartbeat by RNG. Being down, RNG with a triple kill for Xiaohu. Death from below finds nothing. And RNG will clean ace Fnatic in their base. Excellent dive from RNG. They'd had enough of the wave clear from Fnatic. They knew they had the gold lead. They know they have the items. And they know that they have the damage to wipe Fnatic off the map. RNG undefeated in their group, having taken down PSG and Fnatic, looking to make a statement in that group. I think a lot of people will look at them as a team that could possibly 6-0 after seeing Hanwell fall to PSG earlier today. Yeah, I think that it was one of those games where RNG did a lot of what RNG often does, right? I already look at their level one, they read the map, Everything that they expected Fnatic do, they were able to punish. And they actually put Whippo so far behind very early on into the game. Um, but it really did feel like that Fnatic was just throwing themselves into RNG and RNG was just catching it. You know, RNG really didn't need to do a lot because so many fights were so overforced by Fnatic. The number of times we saw, like, even that top lane river play where there was actually a big window for Fnatic to come back. Maybe they kill Xiaohu, maybe they force his TP. No, they greed for the double buff. They split themselves apart and then Kryon ends up getting a kill. And all these things, it was just Fnatic really just... Every opportunity they had to fight, it seemed like that they were trying to go for a fight. And I feel like that in a position where they didn't need to, they ended up costing themselves a lot. It definitely feels like one or two of those moments if they had just held back, if they'd been a little bit less aggressive, they probably had much more of a chance in that game. And We've seen Nitsky's face a few times. He looks pretty dejected. I'll well, be I mean, he's, he must be frustrated because he did not have a great performance in that game. He Nor did at, he yesterday, actually. It, it, he had nine deaths at the end of that game. We saw a number of times where he was overextended. And obviously, like, the World Championship is a difficult place. Um, and I know he puts a lot of pressure on himself. And I'm sure that Fnatic will bounce back. Week two Fnatic is a thing. And they still have one game left uh, in the first half, at least, of group stages. And it's going to be a really important one because with PSG and Hanwha Lai finding one win each and RNG sitting at two and zero uh, for Fnatic to really stand a chance in this group, uh, they're going to need that win against PSG tomorrow. Yeah, they really do. Now, every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, RNG read Fnatic's level one like an open book before picking up first blood. And as you said just a couple of moments ago, Vedius, great level one read here by RNG. Bwipo really was set so far behind. And a lot of it comes down to the fact is on Lee Sin, you can't switch to that Oracle. So if you walked in with an Oracle here as a jungler, you would have known that you'd been spotted out and you probably would have backed away. But it's also the fact that Fnatic think that this is just an easy take for Bwipo. And then all of a sudden, everyone comes out of the brush. He's able to smite and flash away too. And uh, good job here by Niski to be able to body block. But then it puts Niski and Adam in an awkward position. Adam ends up losing his flash. And this is the play that we were talking about as well. Bwipo sees these double buffs and he's like, if I kill Wei, this is so big for me. And Niski's like, hey, I'm going to get on the play first. First, even though Kryon is level two, he flashed. At this point, if they had just killed, I mean, even then, it's, it's, I say if they just killed Xiaohu, because he then took E, he was able to move back towards Kryon, who then had that level advantage as well. And it was just a big overcome. And you could see why they committed to it, because if that play works out, then all of a sudden this early game is flipped on its head and Fnatic is looking very, very strong. But 
crying with the early level two, the the quick E response from Zhao Hu. RNG just played it extremely well, and they get out of that situation. It definitely did, and continues to look dominant in that group. Now, after the break, we'll hear from Zhao Hu as RNG remains undefeated here at Worlds 2021. Welcome back to Iceland for Worlds 2021. RNG pick up their second win here in Group C, and I have Xiaohu with me to talk about this fantastic victory. Ni hao. Ni hao. Thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. me for this interview. Uh, this matchup was a matchup that everyone was looking forward to. Usually, RNG versus Fnatic is an iconic matchup in Group uh, in Group World Stage, mm -hmm. um, but they made some roster changes at the last minute. So, what did you 
anticipate from this lineup given the circumstances for Fnatic? 那首先恭喜你们获得比赛的胜利嘛？那其实很多人都会觉得 RNG 对上 Fnatic 一定是毫无疑问的这场焦点之争，大家很期待。但是呢，其实他们会有临时的有一个选手上的变动，所以说面对这样的话，你们会有怎么样的一个期待，或者说对这场比赛的一个感受呢？嗯，因为其实 Fnatic 今天也不是那个完全体嘛，就是 AD 也是缺席的。然后我对 Fnatic 的期待就是，他们上单之前采访过说。就是他非常以单杀对面线上的选手为荣嘛，就觉得把对面杀了自己就已经赢了，所以我今天就打得非常小心，因为我感觉每一个草丛里都藏着一个阿福。So I really feel because they got some roster changes, especially on their previous AD player. So uh, I think because they have some, uh, uh, I don't have much thinking about the game against Fnatic, but I really feel mm -hmm. I'm very excited about playing against Adam, their top laner, because in the previous interview, oh. Adam mentioned something like he was super proud of like making solo kills in the laning <laughs> phase, just punish the opponent's top laners. So for today's game, I really played very meticulously. I really feel every in every single bush, there may be some all after. <laughs> Just jump out, so I'm, I'm excited about that part. I'm really happy that you mentioned Adam because he played his famous Olaf against you today against Kenan. What are your thoughts on the champion in this matchup in particular and in general in the meta? Because we've been so, we've been seeing so many champions today. Mm -hmm. 那其实呢，在今天你们的对面的一个上单选手 Adam， 他也拿出他的招牌的一个奥拉夫嘛，然后你也是选出凯南来应对。所以说，你怎么看待可能这个版本的这个英雄，就是奥拉夫啊，或者说凯南这些英雄，或者说或者这个版本的一些上单的生态？因为现在好像很多的英雄都可以在上单出场。嗯，我觉得上单这次世界赛上单这个位置，就是选择英雄是最不固定的吧，就看这个选手的绝活或者对什么英雄比较有自信吧。然后对面上上了奥拉夫。我也是有所耳闻嘛，他之前在那个 EU 赛区也是经常玩这个英雄嘛，然后今天确实有一波他蹲在上路二草的时候，那一波我确实有点慌，<笑>因为对，如果他第二个 Q 命中的话，我可能会有点危险，嗯。So I really feel in the current meta, there's a wide variety of champion choices for the top laners. And I really feel like all the champions, if you have the confidence on, or you can master with this champion, everything can happen around the top lane. And also, I think for today's game, uh, I think in one particular thing I want to mention is like mm -hmm. Adam had it in the bush around the uh, top lane. And at that part, if he just um, got the Q skills on me, the second skills, I may got in a very dangerous situation. So I, I was kind of worried about his Olaf at that time. Yeah, Olaf can be very surprising indeed. Well, thank you very much for all this insight, Xiaowu. Uh, congrats on winning the first game, Xie Xie, for this interview, and good luck on the next one, Wendy. Thank you so much for the translation, as always. And we're going to take a short break now, and we'll be back in a couple minutes with two teams who are looking to get their first win in Group A, as we, as we will have C9 facing versus Funplus Phoenix. Stay tuned. <laughs> 